Hello and welcome. This video is a quick start guide to help you get started with Wavefront's query language. Tanzu Observability by Wavefront is a powerful tool and to realize its full potential, we need to use its querying language. The query language helps you to slice and dice your data in a way that makes most sense for you and enables you to configure efficient alerts. Before we interact with the product, let's first take a look at what metrics and time series actually are. A metric in plain text consists of a metric name, a numerical value, a unique source, a timestamp, and optionally, point tags that describe context of the metric. In this example, we're looking at disk space used at a particular time from source app 18, that is in production environment in US West 1 availability zone. This explains what a metric is, but what is a time series? A time series is a unique combination of metric name, source name, and point tags over a period of time that with usually changing values. Time series in a line plot are represented by the orange and blue lines we see here. The key point here to grasp is that as soon as an attribute associated with the metrics changes, it becomes a new time series. Both time series have the same name, the same source. However, the point tag called version changed from 1.4 to 1.5, which essentially creates a new time series. The change in unique set of attributes is represented by a color change in wavefront. Now that we understand what metrics and time series are, let's interact with the query language in the query editor. Let's create a chart. And as an example, we are going to query back CPU used percentage and display results from all sources that are in production environment and only in US West 2 availability zone. Let's first get started with the TS expression. TS basically stands for time series. The first thing we will add here is the actual metric name. As you can see, with the metric name, we're pulling back results from, uh, we're pulling back results that have this unique metric name. And they can be from sources that are in different availability zones in different environments. But if you remember, as an example, we're going to look at only the production environment in US West 2 availability zone. For that, what we can do is we can start with a comma and trim down only to US West 2 availability zone, which is essentially a point tag associated with these metrics, and only our production environment. With those added, you can see that we are now looking at sources that are only in US West 2 and only in the production environment. We can also use particular sources to look at specific utilizations. For example, let's look at results only from App 11. Now we have trimmed down all of the noise and we are only looking at the CPU usage percentage for source app 11. And finally, we also have the capability to issue wildcards to return everything that conforms with our required result. Let's look at only app servers, excluding the database servers. Basically, everything that's, that has a source name that starts with app is being displayed back here. As you can see, all of the database servers have been excluded. This completes our Curian Quick Start Guide. Thanks for watching. In upcoming videos, we will discuss how to apply advanced functions on top of our base queries.